Hey everyone, I'm Brian Parks, uh, and in this video I wanted to show uh, something that I was planning to show uh, at uh, peak, peak PHP, uh, which is actually tonight uh, while I'm recording this video. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get quite the attendance uh, that I was looking for, uh, probably because we had to switch to a virtual event um, due to uh, we're uh, instructed to stay at home here in Colorado, uh, so we switched to a virtual event. Uh, if you're into PHP and in the Colorado Springs area, though, you know, now that we're virtual for a while, uh, potentially anywhere in the world, uh, but if you're interested, uh, go to meetup.com slash peakphp and you can see more about us and uh, what we've got going on. So, uh, yeah, a little bit about me. Um, I do write PHP, I do write uh, C-sharp uh, and stuff like that. Obviously I have a YouTube channel. Uh, if you like what you see here, uh, check out some of these other videos I've got on my channel. Uh, and be sure to like this video, subscribe, share it with your friends and coworkers, and uh, let me know in the comments uh, or by email uh, what sort of topics you want me to talk about in future videos. So what I really wanted to talk about is uh, using PHP uh, using uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Uh, I have to be honest, when I first heard about Windows Subsystem for Linux, uh, and even when I first started trying it out, I wasn't terribly impressed by it. Um, but since then, I watched a couple videos and realized that how I was thinking about it was not really how it had been designed. I assumed that it was a full Linux, or intended to be, uh, a Linux environment for Linux programmers who just happen to be using a Windows machine. And to a certain extent, that's accurate, but it's really a little bit more than that. So we're going to see how in the context of PHP, uh, it, it, it actually works a little bit a little bit better, I think, than, a, than just your standard Linux uh, dev environment. So I'm going to start up Windows Subsystem for Linux uh, by just searching for WSL. Um, in my start menu. Um, I'm not going to go through installing and configuring Windows Subsystem for Linux. There are plenty of videos out there uh, on how to do that. Uh, very good videos. I think uh, one that I, I like, I, I'm pretty sure Scott Hanselman uh, did one. Um, he's a he's a Microsoft guy, but he's a really good uh, presenter and he has a podcast. Lots of good information uh, that he puts out on YouTube and via his podcast. Uh, definitely check that out. So I'm going to start WSL. And uh, I'm actually going to go to my home directory. And the colors on this are not great. Don't worry about that. And you'll see why in a minute. So I'm actually go, going to go into a directory I call working. This is where I put all my projects. And I'm going to make a directory called PHP WSL. And then go into that directory. Now, I'm going to do code dot. And what this is actually going to do is run Visual Studio Code uh, rooted at this, this current directory, this PHP WSL directory. But it's not going to run it in Windows Subsystem for Linux. It's going to run it on my Windows machine, uh, but in a special mode that kind of links it to the Linux environment. And you'll see that when it starts up here. So here's code, here's Visual Studio Code, and notice it's down in the taskbar. It is the full Windows version. I didn't install Visual Studio Code in the WSL environment. But you'll notice a couple indicators that it is linked to that Ubuntu uh, WSL environment. One, it'll show up here, and then down here, it'll, it'll also show that it's connected to that remote environment, or it says remote environment. Realistically, it's just uh, in WSL. And to be completely honest, I don't remember if I had to set something specific up uh, to do that. Uh, I will leave a link in the description uh, below uh, as to how you can get that set up. Um, so yeah, so here's the, the, the folder. Obviously, it has nothing in it because I just created it. Um, but let's go ahead and create a new file, let's say index.php, that sounds like a good name, and let's do nothing fancy, just 
echo hello world. Now the uh, the creator of PHP and other people uh, like to advertise that your PHP hello world can just be hello world. Um, but that doesn't really prove that we're using PHP at all. So I'm going to do the slightly more advanced one of echo hello world. We'll save that and go. Actually, we won't go back to the, the console here. We could. Uh, it's, it's just as valid a command line interface as, as any other method. But instead, we'll actually just do control and tilde here to pull up the terminal. And notice that it shows the exact same thing it's showing that we're running in this WSL environment. And just in case you don't believe me, I'll actually cat etsy issue. Normal Linux command proves that it's Ubuntu. Um, and yeah, so now let's make sure PHP is installed. It is, uh, let's see what version it is, PHP dash dash version. 7.2, that's pretty cool. If you don't have PHP installed in your WSL environment, you can do, just do sudo apt install PHP, and that'll install it. I think I actually did PHP-7.2 uh, uh, to get the specific version. I'm not sure uh, what the default version on Ubuntu 18.04 is, um, but uh, I, have, I have a couple apps that were built on 7.2, and I didn't really want to deal with uh, what might break if I went to 7.3, for instance. Um, so you'll also notice that the working directory is working PHP WSL. And we'll just do uh, something very simple. I don't know, colon 8000 sounds good. Uh, and listening on localhost colon 8000, document root is our working directory. And uh, control C to quit. So, uh, um, yeah, so this is just the PHP development server, not intended for production, but really convenient for things like this where you just you don't want full fledged Apache uh, with mod PHP or uh, PHP uh, FPM with Nginx or anything crazy like that. Not that those things are crazy, it's just it's a little heavy for a development environment. Um, that said, I have run into cases where you'll see one behavior with the development server and a different behavior with the uh, either mod PHP or PHP FPM. That's less with uh, implementation details in the, the modules versus the, the particular uh, executables um, and more with environmental things. Uh, so if you're handling static files one way in one environment and a different way via your code, you know, that, that can lead to some, some weird issues. So I definitely recommend testing in an environment like production. Uh, but for now, this development server is just fine. So I'll go back to my browser, localhost colon 8000, and we'll see hello world. And let's pull up the source. And it's just because of the echo hello world. Uh, and we can see that the PHP is running. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, to prove it even further, we can do the dreaded PHP info, which I think still works on this installation. You can disable that, uh, but I don't think I have here. So we'll refresh that. And boom, we have PHP info. Notice it very much indicates it's running on Linux, built-in HTTP server, uh, and then all sorts of details. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So that's PHP running in uh, WSL. And uh, sorry, let me pull up the actual terminal I'm using. Uh, this is, you can do, a, you know, whatever fancy stuff you want here. You can do uh, one thing that I typically do is I, I usually have a, a router file uh, that does some additional additional routing uh, to make things behave a little bit more like um, the environment that I'm working on. Um, uh, so that 
So I might do like path to router uh, dot PHP. Um, I use MVC frameworks a lot. So if you use something like Laravel or something like that, you would pass the path to the Laravel uh, router file uh, to run it here so that you can get uh, pretty routes. So the routes to the controller and the, the method as opposed to uh, looking for a file with, with that specific name. Uh, so that's how you'd accomplish that. And it's just this the same Linux command line that if you've done PH develop, PHP development uh, using Linux as your dev environment, uh, you, you'd run the same exact commands, but you'd have everything basically running in your, uh, all your dev environment stuff running in Windows. The only thing that's running in Linux is the PHP process itself. Uh, so I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, I, I've actually also done node development this way. Um, one of the websites that I maintain, actually the website for my 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 business, sh uh, Shutterpilot, um, I use a tool called uh, Hugo, uh, which is a, a Go-based uh, static site generator. Uh, I didn't want to install that on Windows and have to deal with you know path manipulation that, and that sort of thing. It's really quick and simple to install in Linux. So I installed it in the WSL environment and I do the exact same thing I showed in this video where I open up Visual Studio Code using code dot in the working directory. I run Hugo in Linux and I do all my development in Windows and they seamlessly work together because of the magic of Visual Studio Code. So if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button down below. Uh, Leave a comment if you want to see more things like this or if you have questions about this. Uh, share this with your coworkers, colleagues. Again, this doesn't just pertain to PHP. This also pertains to things like Node and uh, you know, there's that Go app that I use. Um, so even if you don't use PHP, you might, uh, you might still be interested in, in this content and your, your friends and colleagues might as well. And be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I put out content, some like this, uh, some more about, uh, recently it's been a lot of stuff about uh, how I effectively work from home because that's that's a, been of interest to people lately. Um, but yeah, definitely check out um, my YouTube channel. Right now I've got a, I only got a few videos, um, but I'm making videos pretty regularly. I was uh, going live on Monday nights for a while uh, I've since stopped doing that because the attendance wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. Uh, but if that's something you're interested in participating in, uh, let me know in the comments. Have a good evening.